a woman of many parts. The daughter of a Protestant father and a Catholic mother, she became a trade unionist, a socialist, a suffragist and a republican. And by her marriage to former UVF member and SOM veteran George McBride, she also demonstrated her commitment to building a non-sectarian society based upon principles of equality and respect. Um, and again, Margaret touched on it, the complexity and the layers of her history. We do have a shared history and you see that um, really coming to the fore in the marriage of Winifred and of George McBride, a UVF volunteer who fought in the Battle of the Somme the same year that Margaret was in the G or sorry that Winifred was in the GPO in Dublin with James Connolly. They fell in love and I suppose it was a labour of love as well for working class and socialist politics. She's as much a hero in Dublin as she is in Belfast. And to that end I wanna ask you to put a round of applause for Nal Ring, who's here representing the Dublin Lord Mayor. So now her son Michal Boatlum Buikus Moore a Gawal the Deirdre Hargi Ordware and Met Bale Ferishta Ospe in our lawher Oxon Falter Kurshi rowing on Shohin Yu Oxon Falter Kurshi rowing on Shohin Yu It's my absolute honour to be here in Belfast as Deputy Mayor of Dublin representing Michal McDonagh, the Lord Mayor I'm delighted that to see a Republican and a woman as Lord Mayor of Belfast We have had Fabulous women in in office in as Ordware in Dublin, Kathleen Clark, and more recently Crean and Dolly uh, in 19 in, in 2016 for the commemorations. When we were discussing this at committee level in terms of uh, having an event, and we decided that we wanted to go to Belfast and we wanted to commemorate Winnie Carney, and particularly in this year the, the centenary of women getting the vote. Um, Una mentioned the National Graves Association of Belfast and mentioned Joe. Uh, she actually told us he was a very shy, retiring, quiet man. <laughs> so she certainly fooled us on that. I, I said it in the, in the graveyard up in Milltown. We are very, very honoured and proud that the NGA Belfast have collaborated with, the, with us on this event. And we are delighted that they have gone board with us. It was a wonderful day. On behalf of the Relatives Association, and on behalf of the Belfast National Graves, I want to thank them for the work, the endless and the tireless work that they have done over many years in elevating Winifred Carney or Winnie Carney to the, to the position that she is in. I said I wouldn't single anybody out, but I want, to, I want to acknowledge Una for the work that she has done in putting this together. I know that the, the, the Relatives Association is very much a collective grouping of people uh, who again have battled against lack of interest, lack of government sponsorship, lack of government concern, but this today wouldn't happen without the work that she has done. It is fitting that we remember her in the year that commemorates not only her 75th anniversary of her death, but also the centenary of Irish women getting the vote. She was a revolutionary, a republican, a feminist, a socialist, a trade unionist, and a Gael Gore. I want to give a special welcome to Des Cassidy and the extended Kearney family who have joined us here today. The association is delighted that this the first event that we have organised outside of Dublin is taking place here in Belfast. As an all-island organisation, it's entirely fitting that we are here today to pay tribute to one of Belfast's finest women. As we go marching, marching in the beauty of the day, a million darkened kitchens a thousand milfs grey, a heart touched with all the radiance that a sudden sun discloses. For the people hear us singing, bread and roses, bread and roses. As we go marching, marching, we battle to for men. For they are women 
Satan's children, and we mother them again. Our lives shall not be sweated from birth until life closes. Heart starve as well as body. Give us bread, but give us roses. As we go marching, marching, unnumbered women dead, go crying through our singing, their ancient cry for bread, small art and love and beauty, their drudging spirits new. Yes, it is bread we fight for, but we fight for roses too. As we go marching, marching, we bring the greater days. The rising of the women means the rising of the race. No more the drudge and neither in that toil whereon reposes, but a sharing of life's glory, bread and roses, bread and roses. In 1913, Winifred and James Connolly, her close comrade, wrote the manifesto to the linen slaves of Belfast. While Connolly wrote of the Belfast mills as slaughterhouses for the women and penitentiaries for the children, Winifred's contribution was to develop demands for a woman's inspector, for a trade board, for much needed reform to improve the working conditions of women. She was a practical woman who was clear in the changes that needed to be made. And Belfast worked hard to support the starving Dublin working class during the lockout of 1913. And she wrote an account of the Workers' Republic of the meetings held at street corners in Belfast church door collections, collections of football matches, theatres, music halls and picture houses. She wrote, we hope to be able to forward good sums each week until the end of the struggle and look to that spirit of good fellowship and comradeship that has stood us in good stead. For these be the times that try men's souls and women's. And those last two words, and women's, were no mere afterthought. They were deliberately placed for emphasis. Winifred always made sure that women's interests were included. As well as her trade union involvement, she was a staunch Republican. She was involved in coming to mind from its outset, attending its inaugural meeting in Dublin in April 1914. And she played a leading role in the Belfast branch, where women who insisted on their right to be equal with the men of the Irish volunteers, who held shooting competitions with the men, and Winifred won one of the competitions. She was involved in another important political movement, the suffrage movement. And when the Irish Women's Franchise League set up a branch in Belfast in 1914, after the outbreak of war almost wiped out the suffrage movement, she and other trade unionists attended meetings and gave their support. The Winifred, the causes of women, of labour and of Ireland were all part of the movement for freedom, for the emancipation of women and the working class. For the next few days, Winifred was busy typing up secret messages and mobilisation orders before Easter Monday morning, when she and her comrades got into formation. She insisted on staying with her comrades until the final surrender. Winifred Carney put herself in the front line, courageously accepting danger because of her commitment to the cause of Irish freedom. She's been called a silent radical, but Winifred was not silent. She was outspoken when necessary, speaking out against injustice, passionate in her belief that a workers' republic was the only just way forward. My grandfather and his four brothers fought in the GPO in 1916, and in my grand-uncle's papers, Lee Morin, who translated Pater Carney's soldier song into our own the vein, in his papers, he mentions at five o'clock on, on the Friday when they were going to evacuate the GPO, Pierce ordered that all the women and the wounded be taken to Jervis Street. My grandfather, his grand, grand uncles and several others were in charge of bringing them. But in my grand uncle's papers, he mentions that they didn't even ask Winifred Kearney, Elizabeth O'Farrell or Julia Grennan, would they go? They knew they were there to stay. So she should 
take off her Sam Brown belt and no one would know she'd been there. Her response was to take it off, carve her name on it and put it back on, defiant to the end. She and Julia Grennan, the last women left in the GPO, marched with their male comrades to the grounds of the Rotunda Hospital, where they stayed all night before being marched off to prison. When Winifred returned to Belfast, Cumberland organised a ceremony of welcome on Divis Mountain. The volunteers trooped the colour, and Cumberland presented her with a Tara brooch to commemorate her role. As her colleague Elizabeth Corr said, she was the only one of our little band who did her duty like a woman on that never to be forgotten Easter week, where the bloods of our Irish heroes washed away the stain that dimmed the gloom of Ireland for so long. It is a hundred years ago this year that the women of Ireland struck a blow for the liberation of all women in Ireland and Britain. They broke through the blanket ban on women voting in elections. In 1918, after decades of campaigning women, over 30 and certain property qualifications won the right to vote. And Winifred again made history in becoming the first woman in Ulster to stand in the general election of 1918. Although she stood on a Sinn Féin platform, she proved to be as radical as ever, as in her election manifesto she stated, the form of government for which I stand is the People's Republic, the Workers' Republic, the enthronement and power of the working class, in which no idle rich class shall exploit men and women and children and grow fat and wealthy upon the sweat and blood and labour of the working class. It was a strong feminist statement, a reminder that she was a feminist and supporter of women's suffrage. In a strongly unionist constituency, she received only 395 votes, but stayed strong in her radical beliefs. And what of the woman herself? What would Winifred Carney say to a gathering like this? What would she tell us? We're going to listen to her and she's going to speak. And Rosaline Welch will read one of her Carney's election manifesto and her pledge. To the electors of Victoria, the great only appear to be great because we are on our knees. The Republican or Sinn Féin party is contesting every seat in Ireland against the candidates of all other parties. Unionists, Home Rule, Labour, because for the first time in election history, there is but one clean and clear cut issue before the electors. Whether the people of Ireland are to have their own free choice without the interference of any other power, people or parliament of the sovereignty and form of government under which they shall live. The principles I state and stand upon are these. The right of all the peoples, the Irish included, to the absolute free and non-tramel choice of their own fate and political and social destiny. At an election meeting she spoke from the hard lot of mill workers in Belfast and stated that women had not just been given the vote as a reward for what they'd done in the war, it was because they had fought for it and many had died to get it. In the hard years to come in the North, Winifred continued to be an active Republican, a key figure for many who came to Belfast to help with the war against the British. As an IRA commandant testified, her home was always open, even though she was watched constantly by the authorities. She supported the men jails in Crumlin Road, worked on escape plans, was secretary of the Irish Republican Prisoners' Dependence Fund and helped to smuggle guns and ammunition to IRA fighters. She was arrested in July 1922, but released after 18 days because her health was very poor. Partition forced many of her comrades to move south, and Winifred stayed with her mother in their home in Carlisle Circus. When there was a revival of Labour politics in Belfast, she joined the Socialist Party of Ireland and the court board branch of the Northern Ireland Labour Party. She continued to work for the trade union movement until her marriage in 1928, 
as she and George McBride moved out of Belfast. Until ill health prevented her, she retained her interest and involvement in socialist politics. She died far too young on the 21st of November 1943 at the age of 55. As her comrade Cahill O'Shannon said in his obituary, she was a good comrade, loyal follower, a silent good worker, deep and loyal in her friendships and in her allegiances, a great and trusted custodian of confidences. I imagine people who had who had fought hard for Winifred Carney's memory to be to be elevated where it should be, and no less of a person than her great great nephew, my friend, Desi Cassidy Valadery from the 1960 Association. The next week will be led by the Belfast National Grace by Breeds Wright. The Shared History Project, which is known in Belfast as Ships, has deputies from Sir Brian Quinn. From the Senate, the Urn, we were going to ask Ro we we're going to ask Rose Conway Welch to lay that wreath on behalf of all of those elected representatives and all of those who they represent. They're from the Carney family, among others. Uh, so again, thank you for being with us today. And I see if I'm a wreath, I can't read most of them too far, but from the Core Sisters. And the Core Sisters were contemporaries and friends of come to on activists and friends of Winnie Carney. She made an invaluable contribution to the struggle for Irish independence, for women's rights, and for a better and socialist society. I'm delighted as the new mayor of Belfast um, that this is one of my early engagements. It's women like Winifred Carney that I look up to, and women who have followed in her footsteps since then. And I think it's only right that we come together right across the island here today to pay homage to her, that we don't forget her and more importantly that we write women back into our history again. So Garmila Mayaga, thank you. And I just hope that in this commemoration and the ones to come, the general election, the women's vote, the start of the War of Independence, the first oil, that we'll all meet again, either here in Belfast or in Dublin. You are all very welcome in Dublin. If I, as Lord Mayor, can give as warm a welcome in Dublin as you've given to us here today in Belfast, I'll be doing my job well. So, go to Mahagwyd Galair. Winifred Kearney died on the 21st of November, 1943, a socialist to the end. She initially refused a pension for her part in 1916. She relented only weeks before her death. Her brother refused to have her grave marked so that the name of McBride would not appear, a final protest at her marrying a Protestant. In 2016, their medals were placed together in Belfast City Hall as a message of reconciliation. Here is the unlikely union of a Shankill Road man, George McBride, member of the Ulster Volunteer Force, a soldier of the 15th Battalion of the 36th Ulster Division, a survivor of the Battle of the Somme, and Winifred Kearney, Secretary of the Textile Workers Union, a founding member of Belfast Common a Man, Secretary to James Connolly, adjutant in the GPO throughout the 1916 Rising. Many years later, the Belfast National Graves Association discovered the final resting place of this fine woman and a headstone was erected. As we go marching, marching in the beauty of the day A million darkened kitchens, a thousand mill-offs grey A heart touched with all the radiance that a sudden sun discloses for the people here are singing bread and roses bread and rose